The Holton Ayler Show, episode nine. The boys are on the road this week. A spring break for Jack and Drew. Caden's out of town with work. We have a co-host, though, helping us join the show. In just a few minutes, we're going to interview him. And he's going to co-host it with us. Tegan Wilk, ECU legend, now at Houston. We'll get into why he transferred, his career at ECU, and his recruitment right after this. Hope you enjoy the show. If not, as always. Holton Naylor's turns, and Holton will take off and run himself. He's at the 40-yard line. Holton Naylor's to the 30. What can he do? 20, 10, 5, touchdown Pirates. There's local politics, bud. It's showtime! Episode 9, The Holton Naylor Show. I'm in Texas on the road. Jack's in Vegas? Where are you Northern at, Jack? California. Sacramento. Northern California. Drew is in the mountains in his car somewhere. And hey, then... <laughs> gotta get it done, man. For sure, respect. And then Tegan Wilk, ECU legend, our boy, is now in Houston. Are you in Houston right now, or are you on spring break too, Tegan? No, I'm in Houston still. I have my, my spring break's next week. Okay, cool. Well, dude, I uh, appreciate you joining. You're going to help co-host. First, we're going to interview you. we got to ask you some questions. Um... First, let's get to it. Um, what went into your decision? You know, we'll get into your ECU career, but let's just get into the the obvious is you're at Houston now. You're not at ECU. What went into the decision to to transfer and to leave East Carolina? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a, a ton of variables that are in place. Um, but I, I was more thinking about myself uh, and set myself up for the future. I mean, everybody in here understands their goals and aspirations to get to the next level. I just felt like I need to put myself in a better situation uh, schematically. Uh, and I do think that the um, conference realignment kind of messed everything up with the way I saw ECU progressing. I, th I thought that uh, they played some power powerful teams, power five teams. At the beginning of my career there, obviously when you were there, we played a couple of power five teams. Um, but this year we're – it seems like you have just an FCS schedule, you know what I mean? So it's just I, – I didn't see myself wanting to play like that. I wanted to see myself in, on a bigger level um, and set myself up for the future uh, in the long run. Dude, I definitely get that. I, uh, you know, We talked about it last episode. It might be the weakest schedule ECU's ever had in football this next year. So hopefully we can win some games. But I definitely see and respect that, dude. Being in the league, like it definitely matters where you play and who you play against. Now, ECU is a big school – and all that, but who you play against, um, you know, like you said, when you were at ECU, when we were at ECU, um, we were in a conference where we played the Houston's, the Cincinnati, the UCF's, like bigger name schools that are now in the Big 12, which is who you're playing. So um, did anything, I, like, I know you were close with Coach Weaver and he left. Uh, how much of a role did that play, in, you know, in you leaving? Uh, so, yeah, how much did that play a role in it? Yeah, I mean, he didn't leave until after I left. That was, okay. probably, like a, that was probably a month after. But, like, I honestly, like, I kind of figured most of the coaches would leave just because we were very, very good on defense for the past couple of years. And last year probably was our best year just because we didn't have necessarily an offense that was super explosive and we still held a bunch of teams to uh, to a very few points. So I kind of figured that most of our coaches were going to leave. And honestly, like, that wasn't a big reason because, like, I – I still text Coach Harrell. I, I texted Coach Houston a, a couple weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago. Um, so there's, like, no burnt bridges at all. I still love all the coaches. Um, I still talk to Coach Weaver, still talk to Coach Harrell. Like, I love all the coaches. That had nothing to do with me leaving at all. It was just, like, my my time – just think my time frame at ECU would – got to an end after five years you know what i mean no i feel that so, well you're your sixth year dude dude it feels like golly crazy. bro i could uh i could not play six years my body's uh feeling it after five years so props to you <laughs> hey t but um i got a question uh so in your re recruitment obviously you kept it low-key but i was pretty much kind of in the loop because i mean i lived with you for like the past three four years so uh just like what put Houston above the rest? Like why why you did you choose Houston over the rest of your other yeah. opportunities? Yeah, I mean, uh to start out with, I mean, y'all know this, but originally, like I was I was really like set forth on going to Oklahoma and Oklahoma seemed super high on me. Um, and they were pretty much saying once their safety enters the uh, draft that they were gonna pick me up kind of right away. 
Um, but obviously that backfired once he ended up coming back. I think it was for some NIL money, but I'm going to stay out of that. Uh, so once that happened, I had to kind of get back on my whole, uh, let me talk to all these coaches. And I landed on Coach Fritz while he was at Tulane, and they recruited me highly at Tulane while he was there. And then once they made the change to Houston, I uh, had a couple of FaceTimes um, and Zoom meetings with the uh, defensive coordinator and the safeties and the safeties coach there. Um, and it seemed like our priorities um, were super aligned and they, they understood where I was coming from um, and what I wanted to accomplish. So I think schematically and, and mindset wise, it wasn't much of a, a change for me because if you know anything about Coach Fritz, he's super hard nosed and do the right thing, culture, culture, culture. And I, coming from Coach Houston, as you all know, it that's pretty instilled in me already. So it wasn't a hard turnaround at all. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up too, because uh, I feel like a lot of people don't realize how like situational the portal is. I mean, if one kid makes a different decision, you could have ended up at Oklahoma or any other type type of school. So I'm glad you brought yeah. that up. Yeah, 100. percent And honestly, like I, I mean, y'all know I kind of shut. I didn't shut everybody down, but I didn't even think I was going to go to any other school but Oklahoma once that happened. Uh, once they were like, we were, we're we're just waiting on time right now. Like, just hang in there. Uh, like, we need you to fill a spot. And from then on, I was kind of set on it. I had some Amazon stuff ordered already, getting a golf towel of Oklahoma and stuff like that. But yeah, it didn't work out. But that's you. That's how the portal is. It's a it's a crazy place to be in. Most definitely, T Tegan. So now. Uh you've been able to experience almost two different programs um even though you've only been in houston for a short amount of time if you can go back and kind of think of one positive from ecu and the program um and one area where you think they could fix some things or improve on what would those two be uh one area that i think that was huge uh for ecu one i think the fan base at ecu is insane I, don't, I have yet to see a fan base like that. I mean, I I know I've only played for one team, but I mean, y'all, I think y'all can agree with me when we, when I say that they're just beyond passionate um, and the, they have super big highs and super big lows, but I can respect that. And I think that if you want the best for your program, that's how it got to be. Football wise, I think that Coach Houston is extremely, extremely good at motivating his players. And the way that we practice set me up for, I think, more success than most kids. Because once I got here and we started practice, I know Coach Fritz came up to me at the end of our first practice and was like, you can tell you were you were brought up the right way um, and you know how to practice hard. So I think that was probably the main thing football-wise is just them knowing uh, how to actually practice. Yeah, that's a big compliment coming from a, a fellow American top coach. So Right, yeah. I'm going back to your other thing about, about one thing that they can work on. To me, just from seeing, I know Houston is such a big, a big city and a huge area, but I just, ECU just gives it a small town feel. And I feel like on the recruiting stuff, it's not like a, uh, they don't, they don't pitch the, we're going to get you noticed on a national level. It's just like, you're going to come here and the fans are going to love you. Like once right. you, I think if you got more people pushing the, we're going to be on national level. We're going to be the conference champions in the American every single year because our, our schedule isn't crazy. So we're going to shoot for a conference championship every year. And then once that happens, you're with the new 12-team uh, playoff. You're kind of set, to be honest. Yeah. And so, I mean, with Keaton having a great year last year and, and hopefully he uh, returns back healthy and makes a big name for him. But he kind of set the tone for ECU in the recent years. And then if, if we could just figure out the schedule and, and dominate that, like you just said, it would kind of set that up for coaches to start talking to recruits on a, on a national level. Yeah, without a doubt. And honestly, like that year, two years ago, with like Holton and um, CJ and Ryan Jones, Tig, Keaton, like you have a whole – you have an NFL roster right there. Every single person got an NFL invite. Like that all of a sudden – Gerard Stink – Gerard yeah, Stringer. like our defense was insane that year. We were way too deep at safety. Like you, obviously, we had dudes at safety that were mad they didn't play. But like you had four dudes that could be starters. You know what I mean? Like you, that was a crazy team. And I think if we just need exposure, to be honest, because like that's what the fans deserve too. They need 
they deserve to get uh get out what they put in you know what i mean they're yeah. all in you can 100 percent tell that they're all in no i agree i think that's uh that honestly that's a key point though honestly and like maybe with this new conference i know it's not as you know stacked as the old conference but hopefully we can start winning games and you know win 10 games a year and keep stacking those seasons because that is how you get noticed is is winning bowl games winning conference championships and this conference obviously is very like winnable i mean we've seen it and even the, the non-conference next year is very winnable one thing i wanted to ask and you don't got to go into too much detail in it but i'm sure the fans want to know is like team boneyard's killing it now that you're gone like this is the first year it seems like it's really taken over um but that's kind of since you left did nil before you left did nil serve a purpose in you transferring at all um i know i know once i brought up to the coaches it seemed like they thought that was the reason they were like if it's about money like our our new boneyard program is is gonna be crazy like we already have people donating and to be honest like for me it wasn't all about the money because like if we're being real once you get into the portal everybody's offering you like you had i'm not gonna say what teams but like i had a team that didn't win any games offering me sixteen thousand dollars a month like who like you don't have that's not an issue once you get into the portal to be honest like if you can play you're gonna get paid regardless of where you're going like that that's not the issue and i think team boneyard itself does it kind of the right way and i've seen way way more posts and exposure than i've seen especially like their uh was their vodka stuff that they're coming out with too and all yeah the they're stuff. killing it now yeah yeah like I mean, they're doing all the right stuff. I think the fans are doing the right stuff by buying into that. Um, but I think for transfers coming in, it's a really good thing just because you can match what other teams match. I know on my official at Houston, we had a dude uh, – again, I can't say what school he came from because it's going to give it away. Um, but I know he came in and tried to ask for X amount of money and – Coach Fritz pretty much was just like, I'm not in it for the money. If you're coming here to get money, like, I'm not in it for that. Like, that's just not what it is. So I know a couple coaches don't feel that way. But for ECU, I think being a smaller school, you got to have to pay players. No, I agree. One thing that I will say is from being in the NFL and, like, seeing the NFL money is, like, you don't realize that in college, obviously, you're going to make what you want to make in college. But, dude, NFL money, like if kids could just get in their mind, especially for ECU, they really need to preach this. I have no clue if they are or not. Is like if you come here and ball out and get to the NFL, like any NIL money you made, unless it's like literally a million dollars, will look like change. To yeah, you. right. And that's something that like I kind of thought of my senior year. I mean, like I I didn't, I was like at the very beginning of NIL, so like I really I didn't have Team Boneyard. Like it was around, but they didn't do any deals yet. They were still trying to figure out you know what to do. Um, but I remember like before my senior year, coach Houston even said that he was like, dude, if you make it to the NFL, like don't even worry about NIL. Like you'll look back and just be like, I'm glad. Cause I mean, I had, I mean, you guys know this. I mean, I had SEC offers to go and make six figures before my senior year, um, and decided just to stay. And one of the reasons was because of that. I was like, you know, I'm in a good position here. We had a really good team. Um, but I mean, you sit there and go to the NFL. I mean, rookie minimum is, you know, seven hundred and sixty five hundred thousand dollars like you're not going to make NIL in that anywhere you go unless it, you're, I mean, a massive guy and, like, I mean, going to be a first-round draft pick. But, right, yeah. Um, so that's kind of, like, that's my view on it as a smaller school. Now, ECU's killing it now with Team Boneyard, like we said, but I still think they need to preach, and all schools really need to preach, is it's NFL, not NIL. NIL can help you a little bit in college. Yeah, it could set you up. But if you get to the NFL, that's a different, you know, type of money. Yeah, most definitely. And honestly, like as a college athlete, like you're not – unless you're a quarterback or like a huge star receiver or star running back, like chances of you getting the bag, very unlikely. Like other than that, like you're just, you're just paying just dudes just to fill the roster at that point. Like you're not making 700 k being that – honestly, like I don't know what our quarterback gets here, but like I wouldn't be shocked if we – if we didn't pay our starting quarterback that, you know what I mean? Just cause we're not like top, yeah. top in the big 12. Like we're in the big 12, but like top of the line is where really where you're putting all that money to, you know what I mean? hundred percent. Well, boys, y'all got anything else before we uh, let Tegan co-host with us and get on to our next topics? I'm good with it. Now let's do it. All right, Jack, you, uh, 
you want this next part and kind of yeah. talk about uh one of our sponsors we mention them every week uh tegan actually can kind of chime in on this a little bit i i think this was definitely a a company that helped tegan during his time at east U, and and now they're moving on and helping other players in the program is anson belts um they have the best belts it's holeless they have great styles uh, i wear them almost every week you know they have they have styles where you could go from the golf course to the business meeting so Give a give it a look to Ants and Belts and and support the Pirates and obviously their their belt company. Yeah, yeah. See they see they kind of looked out for you uh, when you were there, yeah. didn't they? Ants and Belts is the way to go, man. Like I still wear my Ants and Belt that I got. Like I have whatever. I'll wear it golfing, like you said. Like I'll wear it golfing, but I wore it to one of our like uh, donor meetings that we had, uh, and a couple of donors obviously asked about the belt because it was that was one of the little flashy ones. Let's go. Um, and, they were, and then they were like, "What'd you get the belt?" I'm like, "Yo, y'all gotta check out Anson Belts." And <laughs> go. I'm telling you, they're the I, best out there. I think actually, uh, so I was wearing it this past weekend in Arizona with my brothers and my dad. And my dad, I think, is gonna make a purchase at Anson Belts. Let's go. Let's go. So yeah, go to AnsonBelt.com and we'll uh, the official belt of the whole Naylor show. So you got you got to look out for the boys. Hey, let's yeah. stay on the. Uh, Let's stay on the football side. Obviously, the combine just happened. The big news, obviously, Xavier Worthy, Texas receiver running a 4 one um, Drew, I want to ask you first, what do you think your 40 would be if you go out there and ran on a laser right now? On a laser? I'm telling you, man. I'm getting 4 four five two, four five two. I've been training. I've been training fast, man. Laser, though, dude? Laser is... Rough. I'm not running four six, dude. I'm telling you, I'm not running four six. <laughs> you think so, Jack Tegan? What do you think y'all would run? I'm telling you, Jack, you could go first with that one. I think if you would have asked me this question uh, last summer, I probably would have got, I'm gonna say a four nine, possibly on a great day, a, a four eight something. But now, uh, as I transform into corporate America, you'll catch, me, <laughs> you'll catch me running some miles and stuff. I'm not doing too much speed work or anything in my rehab. So uh, I'd probably say I'm, I'm at about a five now. Five? Respect, respect. Tegan, what are you running right now? You're kind of in their prime, even though yeah, you're 60. Well, well, one, Jack's running with one arm because he, he hurt his arm. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you could tell, but I'm back, Tegan. You've, you've been missing. I forgot you started doing push-ups now, too, so you're good. Yeah, I'm big time now. No, nah, I mean, to be honest, we do a, a bunch of speed work here. I know uh, y'all y'all do uh, did what we did at ECU. Um, a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of weight moving, um, a bunch of conditioning. Here we do conditioning. I mean, we do uh, speed work every single day. Good. Uh, so the last time we did our uh, laser 40s, I ran a uh, mid four fives. Hey, That's let's wow. go. Well, ho hopefully next year you're at our uh, – you're at the combine where the boys can support you. We'll have to we'll have to zoom you in live from the combine. That'd be sick. All right. So next question, we always have one of these questions kind of in the show is um, last or last week we talked about the or was this two weeks ago when we talked about the bat league. I guess that was two weeks ago. Um, yeah. The baseball league. This week we're gonna do if you had to restart the NFL and draft players all over, who would you draft in the first and second round? So how we're going to do this is, Jack, you can get the first pick, then Drew, then Tegan, then me, and you can't draft the same players anyone else drafts. So, Jack, who would you take with your first pick to start a franchise with for the next 10 years? I think this is a no-doubter. With his age and his success rate already, with the first overall pick, I'd have to go Patty Mahomes. Respect, respect. I figured I like that it. was I going. Like Drew? I might be able to one-up you here. C.J. Stroud. Oh, that is a good one. That is a that's a pick. that's a great one. Yeah. Two years old. Honestly, I was gonna take CJ Stroud too. Now I don't know. I gotta go with give me Joe Burrow. Okay. Ooh, injury history though. I about to say injury I don't care. Dude's a dog. He's a dog, <laughs> but he's been hurt. All right, you better have a good backup quarterback in the second round pick. I would take um Dude, I'm going to be a little ballsy here. Um, it was either Caleb Williams or Anthony Richardson, and I'm going to go Caleb Williams, and uh, and hopefully he's the next wow. Mahomes. So I would take Caleb Williams. Hate that. Drew, I, I don't think you're one-upping me anyways because Patty Red Mahomes Flag. is still like 28 or something. Yeah, Drew, he's going to have to play until he's 40 for you to, to be good there. <laughs> Jack, who are you taking in, uh, in round two? Uh, round two, I'm looking at the defensive side of the ball. I think you either got to go with an edge rusher or a field general. Um, I 
He picking a Niner. See, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go with Max Crosby. Uh, take an edge rusher, an impact player on defense. The fifth overall pick. Yeah, I think an edge rusher is the most. I like Max Crosby defense. right there. Great pick there, Jack. Okay. All right, Drew. Who do you got? I think I might have stole Tegan's pick again. I'm going with Mr. Pennsylvania, Micah Parsons. No, that's who I was going to take. Are you serious? I mean, 24 years old, all right pro. There. Probably one of the best passers in the league, and I got him for the next 10 years. Except when he <laughs> plays the Niners, he gets clamped. <laughs> I can put him anywhere. He can play inside linebacker. He can rush the passer. That's who I was going to take, boys. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know either. I, I'm going to go with a – I wanted to go defensively anyways, but – Maybe Patrick Queen. I like the way Patrick Queen plays, but I really want to take a safety. Just no way. Him Patrick over Fred Patrick Warner. Queen. He's not even the best linebacker on the team. Buda Baker. Buda Baker's tough too, but he's old right now. You're out of here, Tegan. So you're taking. Um. Yeah. Um, Antoine Winfield, I think, would be a solid pick. No, that's he's no true. He's stop. Like young All Pro. He's tough, but I don't know. Not I'm gonna go four safeties. All right, so I'm gonna go my last pick. I'm going Justin Jefferson. Let's go straight offense. What do you boys think about that? Any uh, reaction or you just, just don't care? There. I yeah, I mean. Patrick, oh, I think Patrick Queen over Fred Warner is uh, crazy. I don't like Fred Warner that much. I don't know. I can't support the Niners. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> All right, so that's it on that. Um, this next segment, we're going to talk about March Madness Sleepers. It's brought to you by Worth Chiropractic. Two convenient locations on Arlington Boulevard. Check out 1-800-BACK-DOC today and uh, schedule your appointment. They'll help you out with just everyday back and neck pain. If you're in a car accident, any sports-related injuries, they will get you back to being you. They helped me stay on the field a lot when I was in college. Um, shout out to those guys. Anytime I'm in Greenville, I am at Dr. Wirt's office. And Jack's a big fan of the buildings. He talks about it every week. So shout out to... Uh, Worth Chiropractic, um, 1-800-BACK-DOC, and uh, schedule your appointment today. So, boys, March March is here. You know what that means. March Madness is right around the corner. And sports betting. If you didn't see last week's episode, Ariel Epstein talked about you know sports betting genius. She's on every show on TV about sports betting pretty much. Um, taught us a lot, so go check that out if you haven't seen it. But it's here. March is here. March Madness is about here. Um, I want to get into, first of all, you know, ECU is about to start the conference cha- uh, conference tournament here. I think it's the 14th through the 17th, so that'll be fun to to watch. I still, I've said it since episode one, I have a future of them to win the entire, this conference tournament. So I don't know if that was the best thing in the world for me to do, but I still, I think we're talented. But um, who, let's talk about March Madness sleepers, I guess. That'd, that'd be a cool segment. I think we, we kind of talk about it. I'm going to let y'all go first, and then I'm a, I got something cooked up. Uh, for the end. So, Jack, you want to go first? Sure. Yeah, my first sleeper team that I got um, is nonetheless than the school that I got my bachelor's degree from, and that is the University of Nevada. Um, they are sitting right now. I think they've got 25 wins. No, that was cap. No, that's true. They're 25 and six. This dude's a fake uh, fan. <laughs> he doesn't care. Uh, I wouldn't say a fan, but I'm rooting for him. Um, so they're 25 and six. They had a big away win last night at Boise State, and then they have one more game of the regular season. And the winner wins the Mountain West Championship in the regular season, and it's versus their rivals, uh, UNLV down in Vegas. It the game is in Reno. It's going to be a sellout. It's a pack game. Um, but Nevada, 25 wins. I think you can't sleep on them. I think the first two rounds are dangerous. They can make a little splash in there. Uh, do I think they're going to the final four? Probably not, but I think they're dangerous, and I don't think a lot of teams want to see them. My next team, I'm going with Creighton out of Nebraska. They're usually it's not pretty a sleeper dangerous. team. I mean, they're not like going to be picked to win it all in a lot of brackets. I feel like. True, true, true. All right, keep going. My bad. Uh, you're good. I made a list of like four teams, and progressively they just get better and better. But uh, I guess this would be the last one that kind of classifies under a little sleeper pick. This team, I do believe, can make a run into the Final Four or better, um, but I'd go Creighton. But OG sleeper is the Nevada Wolfpack. If Clip is seeing this, your new UNLV hat is trash. If I see it, it's wraps. <laughs> oh, shoot. Coming for the heart. Uh, Tegan, do you have – I know we sent you this. I don't know if you have a team. Do you have a team? Yeah, no, I mean, I thought about it for a while. Uh, I mean, Holton, we already talked before. 
you took no me. do not do not say I'm my fake. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say Nevada, though. Nevada, not Nevada. Uh, <laughs> but obviously I can't do that. I'm going to go with the Grand Canyon antelopes strictly because they're the antelopes, and it's dope. But I don't know nothing about basketball, so I can't put any insight on that. I just think that Houston is going to win it all. I went to a game, two games. Dude, they play the most defense, craziest defense I've ever seen in college basketball. It's actually insane. Yeah, you get to see some good basketball with Houston. They're actually very good. And Grand Canyon, dude, they've only lost like four games. They actually like genuinely are a sleeper. Yeah, I think they'll right. be like an eight or nine seed. So that's a good pick. Drew, who do you got? I'm hurt. I got one team, and it was the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> but but I did a lot of research on them, and Tegan picked a good team. So they're out of the Western Athletic Conference. They're 26 and four. They got a win over San Diego State early on. They lost to South Carolina. And you'd probably look at this stat and be like, oh, no. But they only hit seven threes a game. But they score 80 points a game. And everyone knows you can't rely on pure three-pointers in March Madness. So this team's built for the tournament. And they got all the tangibles that make a great tournament team. They hit 24 free throws. Well, they take 24 throws a game. They got a star point guard that's averaging 20, and they score 80 points, and they aren't coming from deep. So Grand Canyon, I think, is a great pick. Drew did his research and uh, backed up Teague in there. Drew's got that mountain connection, boys. Or my connection might be bad now, but <laughs> um, good pick. I really do. I think they'll be fun. Uh, sports betting legal, I guess, for me and Jack in North Carolina, March 11th, because Drew and Teague technically can't bet. But me and Jack, will uh, we'll put on for the boys. Uh, my team... Indiana State, 26 and 5. They are led by Robbie Avila, aka Kareem Abdul Jabbar. This dude has taken over the internet. At first, if you look at him, you think this dude's kind of hooping. Barstool's posted him a couple times. Um, I think we actually got a picture of him. Yes, there's the picture of him. Let's go. This dude is a hooper. Trust me. And look, they are very, very good. 11th best scoring offense in the country um to make a splash in the tournament you gotta score kind of just like grand canyon state um they average 84.5 points per game per game which is 11th in the country like i said they shoot at 50.4 percent which is great you got to win games against good teams you got to make the shots when you when you take them they shoot the three at 38 percent and free throws at almost 80 percent so they're efficient uh when they get their shots kareem abdul jabbar is gonna not kareem but kareem Abdul Jabbar is going to lead them to the promise line. I bet they get to a sweet 16, boys. I might be taking a future on them when the lines come out. Um, I really, I genuinely like them. He's very fun to watch. It seems like March Madness always has some uh, sort of guy kind of, you know, take the internet by storm. He already has a little bit, but if they go win a couple of games, uh, you know, make some splash plays, he does. Uh, this dude's going to be a, a sensation. Let's give a shout out to Indiana State alum, Larry Bird. Larry Bird. Great white. Yeah. You know, Jack, legend has it that uh, every 30 years, Indiana State produces an unathletic white guy <laughs> that takes over college basketball and the NBA. So, Cream might be next. If Cream, a.k.a. Robbie Avila, plays in the NBA, oh, he'd be my favorite player. I uh, You got to buy a jersey right away. Oh, 100%. Him and my Jalen Brunson. The Knicks will probably Dude, if the him. Knicks drafted him, and let's go ahead and get to that. But if the Knicks drafted him, my life would be complete. He probably wouldn't play because the Knicks got some dogs and he wouldn't, he'd probably be like our 10th best player. Except right now, boys, let's go ahead and talk a little NBA. Uh, I know me and Drew chat about it all the time, Jack. I don't know how much you and Tegan are into it, but boys, the Knicks are hurt right now. They're, they're literally, they're starting four out of their starting five guys are out. Um, it looked like Brunson was going down with a very bad knee injury, but he just tweaked it up. So the boys, this is, I'm staying positive though. You want to know why? Because, Tom Thibodeau, what I call him, Tom Thibodeau, loves to play our starters like 40 minutes every single game, just wear them down. And by the time the playoffs were going to get here, the boys were going to be exhausted. But guess what? Four out of our four out of our five starters are sitting the bench right now. So, hey, we're ready to roll now. So when the playoffs comes, when they get ready, they're going to have healthy legs, fresh legs, and the boys are going to be ready to roll. The only thing that worries me, which Drew, you can kind of talk about too, we might have to play Boston round two. Oof. That's the last thing you want to see. And that's the thing you want to go to for out of seven games. 
All right, well, it's hard to win in Boston. Drew, you're getting the boot, Drew. <laughs> um, I'm going to take over for Drew. And while I am acknowledging that I'm not the biggest NBA fan or watcher um, here, I do know that in sports you have to be healthy to win games. So while you are sitting here thinking that the Knicks are just – going to be all energetic going into the playoffs. Um, I think you have a lot of issues and that you should not be as confident as you are. Like what? Well, I mean, you just said it. The Celtics put up 80 points in the first half in a game last week. Celtics are in round two. We're the one team to beat the Celtics. I'm dead serious. It, just because I'm a Knicks fan, I understand. And when we're healthy, we're the one team that will beat the Celtics. If the Knicks don't beat clip this we'll put it on twitter if the knicks do not beat the celtics in the playoffs the celtics will win the championship if the knee whoever wins that series will win it all if the knicks beat the celtics we will drive to atlantic beach right after the game and i'll do a polar plunge butt naked i thought you were gonna say we were gonna uh drive to the to the next round. Uh, I was getting excited there. You're going to say we're going to drive to the All finals. Right, we, we can do that instead. I mean, I don't have to pull. Oh, hundred percent. Go to a game. If I am still in the UFL, I will leave the UFL to go to a next finals game. Mark my words. I promise you, I will use whatever checks I've gotten from this league and take my happy tail right to the finals. That does wow. sound like a good plan, Jack. I heard you're paying for me. <laughs> Tegan, I don't know. You... There, there's no NIL in this last semester of grad school. So. <laughs> yeah, you got me there. Now you got me. Tegan, have you become a Rockets fan now that you're there? Uh, I went to one game. Uh, really? Tickets were $11. So <laughs> that's, that's why I went. Uh, now, it was like one of the first, like literally like the first week I got here, we were just sitting around and I was just like, what do you want to do? And I was just like, let's just go to a Rockets game. Yeah, it's but pretty it's, sick, so, though. You can go to a Rockets game for 11 bucks, Like, it's nothing. Pretty sick. Yeah. I uh, if I stick around the UFL, I might have to might have to drive down and, and visit you or you might have to come down here. Yeah, most definitely. I already told uh, Sean Bailey that we were gonna we we're gonna have the crew back. back Big Sean, dude. Hey, yeah, let's give a shout out to Sean Bailey, dude. ECU alum, offensive lineman. Let's go, Sean. Dude, our one of our very best friends, UTSA strength and conditioning coach for offensive line and defensive line for football at UTSA. So hey, he's in, he's sticking in the conference, and he had his first week this week and said it was legit. And he was like, "There's no wonder they've been winning. They are running it the right way." Um, so shout out to Big Sean Bailey, ECU alum. Uh, we're gonna have to pull for UTSA except when they play the Pirates. So shout out to Big Sean. Boys, Drew is Drew back? Uh, did did the Mountain? How do I sound? He's way better now. Drew, do you have any NBA uh, any NBA comments there before you get attacked by Bigfoot in the woods? <laughs> no, it is a little scary out here. I can't lie, but um, it's just hard for me to bet against the Celtics. I mean, they have a great record at home. I mean. They don't lose much, and they're playing great teams, and they're still winning. So not a team you want to see. Do you agree, though, Drew? You know enough about the Knicks that a healthy Knicks team is deep enough to beat the Celtics and probably one of the only teams that are deep enough to beat them in the playoffs. In in the East, a healthy Knicks team is the only team I'll take to, to beat them. Thank you. And I might have going out again. I might have peer pressured you to do that, but – uh. I appreciate nah, you for saying nah. that. I truly believe it, but it's hard to say healthy when everyone's playing 40 minutes a game. That is true, but you got to think four out of our five starters right now are literally hurt and not going to be back for like playoffs. So that's why we're going to get the four seed, maybe the five seed, which I might would rather even have so you don't got to play the Celtics um, till later. But that's kind of it on NBA. I know we just talk about the Knicks, but I'm the only one who really loves that. Drew, I think, just follows basketball. Drew, do you have any other uh, NBA NBA uh, topics you want to talk about, or is that we're good? Um, uh, I guess my, my finals pick is just uh Celtics Nuggets. Nuggets are sleeper. Nuggets are tough. Yeah, you know who bodied the Nuggets? The New York Knicks. And we can kick Drew now since he said the Knicks aren't making the finals, so that's good. Well, also, the Nuggets are on the West, so it's not like you can body them in the playoffs. You have to get past the Celtics, which you're not going to do. So, But let's move on. A lot of silence going on right here. <laughs> yeah. Jack's, Jack's just trying to hate now. Like, Jack Jack is 100% trying to hate. All right, boys. Let's – uh, we'll get to our best bets. T, you don't got to do any of this just because I know, um, obviously, you can't bet. So, dude, appreciate you joining the show. Uh, we'll definitely stay in touch. You're one of the boys, obviously. 
Um, we'll get you. We'll get you back on before the season, maybe, and then before like the combine next year, we'll get you. We'll get you on. Yeah, most definitely. RIP right, Bat Cave. Yeah, yeah, rest in peace, Bat Cave. <laughs> See you, brother. See you. All right, boys. Best, best. But before we do that, make sure you guys check out Madame Mesquite Goose Club. We get, do giveaways on Twitter or on X, excuse me, at Whole Ailer Show. We'll be giving away Madame Mesquite Goose Club. You see their logo right there in the bottom left corner. Bottom left corner. I don't know how I'm doing that, but it's a pretty sick logo. Um, they got some super sick gear. We will be giving some of that away. We're going to order some more stuff. They are going to send us some more stuff to give away because we're going to give away a lot of it. Um, super sick stuff. Go check them out. Madam Mesquite Goose Club. Thank you to those guys. Give them a little clap. Thank you to those guys for uh, for looking out for us. Boys, best bets. Last segment of the day. We're missing Caden. Um, dude, before I uh, – I want to shout out our records. None of us are – we're all at least 500 or better in nine weeks of doing this. So – Boys are going to be making some money here soon, so you guys might want to follow us out. Um, Je- or let's go, Drew. Uh, Drew, you go first with the bets, then we'll go from there. All right. Uh, coming off a one and one week, uh, thank you, Boston, for shutting down Curry because it was looking like an 0-1 or, or an 0-2 week. But thank you, uh, Jason Tatum and them boys, for giving me a win. But uh, my first one is going to be Luca. Over 52 points, rebounds, assists versus the Pistons. Uh, the Pistons, obviously, one of the worst teams in the league. I know, like, that's probably scary with, like, blowout potential, but it's in Detroit. And although the Pistons don't win a lot, they keep it close. And, obviously, Luka's usage is crazy high, so I think he destroys the Pistons, maybe drops 40. Uh, yeah, um, there's no reason to take a Luka under ever. So, um, and then my next one is Emmanuel quickly over six assists versus the trailblazers. I, I believe that game is also on Saturday. Uh, no Scar- Scotty Barnes and Dennis Schroeder's gone. So, um, he gets a lot of, fa- uh, facilitating work. Um, as of right now, when we're recording, he's only had two games without Scotty Barnes and he was way over six assists. Um, I think this line's too low. It might get bumped to seven before he plays and I would still take it. Yeah, so those are my two. I like them. I like them, Drew. Jack, who do you got? Well, last week, uh, my NHL streak came to a abrupt stop when the Canes got outscored 5-0 to zero in the third period. Um, I know Canes fans were not too pleased with that, and that was, that was pretty tough to watch myself. However, I'm going back to them because I believe in them. Uh, I'm a bandwagon Kaniac ever since I moved to North Carolina. Uh, I became a fan and started attending those games, like I've said before. So on Sunday, the Hurricanes play the Calgary Flames at home in PNC Arena. I'm taking the Hurricanes money line. And then bringing it back to release day on Thursday, I'm taking the Warriors spread versus the Bulls. Uh, In California, I'm thinking Curry's going to start lighting up the scoreboard like a Christmas tree. So I'm, I'm going with my California Warriors. I don't claim them. I'm a Kings fan, but for the sake of California. And then the Carolina Hurricanes. That doesn't scare you what happened to Golden State the other day? No, I don't care. Um, but speaking about that, can't help but notice Holton's shirt right here. Uh, new line for Built When Broken. One of the sponsors of the show. We have a co-founder on the show. Uh, maybe the founder. Might have messed that up. But Built When Broken, great message, even better apparel. Uh, go check out their new line, and, and they're definitely kind of a company that you want to wear and, and help kind of spread the message and spread Jesus like Holton Shirt says. Let's go. Check out the shirt, boys, slash five girls that watch the show. Um, spread Jesus. Yes, I am the founder of Built One Broken, so go check that out, builtonebroken.com. Um, we just try to do positive in the world. We try to spread the word. Um, pretty much I launched it um kind of when the nil started just I, I had the idea for a while and you know went through some stuff that kind of led me to that i was in a bad spot um decided you know i was being built when i was being broken or i was yeah i was being built when broken and that's kind of how i came up with it so uh go check it out built and let's get to my first bet and i want to name one more sponsor my first bet is thursday night the night this comes out celtics versus the nuggets drew's championship prediction um, I'm going to take Celtics spread. Now, look, I, I know I just kind of trashed them a little bit, but I really think the Celtics are the best, second-best team in the NBA um, behind the Knicks. 
and it's going to be in Denver. They kind of have the same record. Uh, Celtics, you know, have a few less losses. So they, I wouldn't think they're going to be a favorite in Denver. Maybe if they are, it's going to be one or two. But I'm going to take them the spread. They've been playing extremely well. Uh, like Jack said, they put up like 80 in like a quarter and a half the other day. Um, so I'm going to take Celtics spread Thursday night versus the Nuggets. And my next one, two other good teams, really good teams in the West. Um, Sunday, Bucks at Clippers. This is another game. Um, it could go either way with the spread, but I'm going to take the Bucks money line. Both of them have 21 losses. Um, it's at the Clippers. Clippers don't really have a home court advantage like uh, like my beloved Knicks do, or really any team in the NBA. They kind of have one of the worst ones. Um, so I'm going to take Bucks there. Anta Sakumbo is going to go in there, ball out. James Harden. Those guys, look, they're playing better in the regular season, but they usually don't step up in big games in the regular season. They usually don't take them that seriously. So shout out. To the Bucks for that win, and shout out to Wayne Hardy Law, one eight hundred injured. If you've been in an accident, car accident, or anything in between, and need a lawyer, call one eight hundred injured. Wayne Hardy will treat you like family and get your settlement, get you a uh, you know a car, a rental car, and everything in between. They treat you like family. That's the Wayne Hardy difference. Shout out to those guys. And boys, I think that's it for episode nine. Um, Anything I'll give you an update on me real quick if you guys want to hear kind of what's going on in my life uh here in the US. Yeah, let's hear it. Do it. Yeah. Um, so last week I kind of said, you know, the reps were kind of weird. Um, they, they still are. So cuts are coming up. We're going from 75 to 58. So literally might get cut on Saturday slash Sunday. And I mean, I really haven't had a chance to show fully what I can do. I mean, I get like six to eight reps of practice. Um, so doing the best I can, you know, been balling out when I'm in there, but you know, can't control what I can't control and going to control what I can control. So might be on a new team or might be headed back to Greenville. So we'll see. Uh, it's been a good experience really. It's first class, everything. Everyone's been great. Love Texas, dude. I'd live here in a heartbeat. I know I told you all that off air. So, uh, something's going to happen this weekend. Either I get cut or I get traded or I'm still on the team. So one of the three, so big weekend for, for the boys and, uh, we'll see. Yeah, I was just going to say, control what you can control, but you already said it. You know, every opportunity you get, just take advantage of it. Um, but yeah, this might go down as the grittiest podcast that we may ever produce. Yeah, literally. I, uh, you know, Holton and the walk ons, and now, you know, Holton's over here scraping for uh, for reps and scraping to stay on a roster. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Yep. Boys, episode nine, spring break edition, Texas edition. Hopefully, Caden's there next week. Uh, you know, are y'all going to be in studio next week? Yep. Let's go. Hopefully, we get some jerseys up here. We uh, scratching and clawing for that and some TVs. So we'll see the studio here soon. Episode nine, the Holt Naylor Show. Shout out to our sponsors. Shout out to the people listening. Uh, we appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.